Ephesians chapter number 4, where we will begin this, this morning. Ephesians 4, and uh, start with verse 11. It says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ, till we all come in the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive. But speaking the truth in, in love may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. Last time, uh, it wasn't this past Sunday, but the Sunday before The Sunday before, uh, we actually uh, last last Sunday wasn't this Sunday, but the Sunday before, we actually considered the subject of deacons. Now, uh, let us consider the subject of the pastor. I suppose. I suppose that there is much abuse in the pastorate, um, but I also suspect there's a lot of folks who misunderstand what the Bible says about, about the pastor as well. <clears throat> In the scriptures, there's uh, there's different words that are used interchangeably uh, for the word pastor, sometimes bishop, sometimes other words. But for the sake of this message, we will use the word pastor. Uh, now, I would reckon, I would suppose that that a lot of a lot of problems would be avoided. Uh, if we would, like any other doctrine, if we would stay in tune with God's Word. And uh, so with that, I will, uh, this will probably be only the first message on the subject. Um, there will probably be a second one uh, next week. But, um, but I would also like to say this that if a man is not called of God to be in the ministry he would do well to get out and um, and, and I, I think I think that sometimes happens people get the wrong idea about about the uh, about the pastorate they get the wrong idea about being in the ministry and they get in it or get uh, get the idea that they want to be a pastor for the wrong reasons. And so um, then they do much damage to the office. And the Apostle Paul, when he was talking about being an apostle, which is different than a, than a, than a pastor, he said, I magnify mine office. Uh, so it ought to be with us, and we ought to, uh, we ought to guard, and uh, we ought to, we, we ought to consider these things, certainly. So, whenever we consider the office of the pastor, let us go to First Peter chapter five.
First Peter chapter five. Begin verse one. The elders which are among you I exhort, who am also an elder, and a witness of the sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. Feed the flock of God which is among you, taking the oversight thereof, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples. To the flock. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Peter, as he wrote under the inspiration of the Spirit, he said to the elders, to those pastors, to those who had been called into the ministry, he said, I exhort, he said, uh, feed the flock of God. Whereof the which is among you taking the oversight, and he gives some directions there. The responsibility of feeding has been called by some being the the primary responsibility of the pastor. Uh, in studying the scriptures very much seems to be the case. Just as we need physical food, so we also need spiritual food. Without either, we would be malnourished, we would, we would be sickly, we would uh, not be well off at all. And so, just as the shepherd in this world that tends to his sheep uh, on a hillside somewhere, has to make sure that his sheep are taken care of, so the pastor must make sure that the church is fed properly. Uh, Peter, Peter was a good one to write on this. Uh, he, had, he, he had been taught of the Lord. He was instructed by the Spirit to write these things. And he says to feed, to feed the flock of God. He said, you know, these are, this is your duty, taking the oversight, not by constraint, but willingly, not for filthy lucre, but of a ready mind. Some people get into the ministry thinking that it's going to be a, a great big paycheck, or that there's going to be a lot of fame or fortune in it. I remember my good friend Troy Shepherd telling me one time, you get into ministry, uh, it's, uh, it's not so much about the, the pay. He said the benefits and the salary are out of this world, is the way he put it. Someone else said it's not so much about the, the income, it's about the outcome. And uh, uh, it, Peter goes on to write, neither as being lords over God's heritage, but being in samples to the flock. We're not, we're not the shepherd, we're the under-shepherd. You see, the, uh, the, there is a difference. The head of the church is not the pastor. It is uh, the Lord who is the head of the church. And so we have to understand these things. Uh, whenever we consider the subject of the pastor. Uh, this is the example and this is the teaching that came from the Lord Jesus Christ. Whenever we think of feeding the flock, in John chapter 21, John chapter 21 and verses 15 through 17,
So when they had dined, Jesus saith to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He saith to him again the second time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? He saith unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest that I love thee. He saith unto him, Feed my sheep. He saith unto him the third time, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me? Peter was grieved because he said unto him the third time, Lovest thou me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. Thou knowest that I love thee. Jesus saith unto him, Feed my sheep. So Peter was a good one to write about it there in First Peter because in learning from the Lord and getting this direction from the Lord, Peter had uh, been taught from the Lord that feeding the flock is for the pastor is equal to showing love for the Lord. And it's a responsibility that we must take very, very seriously. The Lord says here to feed his lambs as well as his sheep, his young ones as well as the old ones. The seasoned saints as well as the new saints all need to be fed. And the Bible has everything we need for both. You know, sometimes a pastor might preach and teach over the heads of those new Christians. Uh, other times, might get caught up in teaching elementary doctrine all the time, and 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 and, and really uh, the milk of the word. But the reality of it is, it must be a mixture, a mixture of both, so that both groups get fed and taught. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 2. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. The lambs need the milk of the word. It's the milk of the word. It's it's where the the teaching must come from. I believe that the pastor who steers away or or drifts away from the word of God is not is not feeding the flock properly. There are some good resources out there. No question of it. But we must make sure that they're all centered around the Word of God. Fun, food, games, all of those things, they have their place. But we must make sure that they don't become the main attraction. You know, you think about uh, you think about 2017, and uh, whenever whenever the the idea of a Bible school comes up, you know, some churches still have those uh, called vacation Bible schools, and uh, and 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 in our day, uh, in our day, it's it's about the the theatrics of it all, the, the 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 fun of it, the the crafts and the the food and the the plays, those sorts of things, but not so much about the Bible part of it. Uh, it's almost it's almost an insult to call it a Bible school anymore because the Bible's not much of it anymore. But back in the old days, I'm talking about. Back in the days whenever, uh, whenever uh, 
dinosaurs like Willard Pyle and James Hobbs were were young, uh, they had Bible schools and, uh, and 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 they taught the Bible. And what a concept! What a concept! Uh, that's the way it should be. Uh, young people need the Bible. People ask me sometimes, say, "Well, I'm looking for church." And uh, I heard you're a pastor. Yes, I'm, I'm a pastor. It's perfect. So what do you have for the young people? Well, I've got the thing that the young people need. And um, I said, what's that? I tell them the Word of God. And that's not, what, that's not usually what people think of in today's society. They want something else. They want games. And they want attractions. But... The Bible is what the, the, the young people need. Uh, old people need the Bible as well. In Hebrews chapter 5, Hebrews chapter 5, beginning at verse 12, For when... For the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The spiritual feeding includes the milk as well as the meat. Folks who have who are young in the faith need the milk. Folks who are older in the faith, they need the meat. Uh, some folks who are unskilled in the Word, maybe they're seasoned Christians, but they don't know, they're unskilled, they need the milk as well. But it's all of the Word. You see, when we think about our country and the shape of our country, the great revivals of times gone past, they weren't built on games and gimmicks and tricks, they were built on the Word of God. And I challenge you to go back and read about the great awakenings and the great revivals of times gone past. It was the Word of God, and that's what the pastor ought to be in. The fact is, I don't care how old you are, how seasoned you are, there'll never come a time when you outgrow the Word of God. And America has not outgrown the Word of God, and neither has any anyone that I know of. The more I study, the more I learn, and the more I learn and study, the more I find out there's more that I need to learn. It's just the fact of it. 2 Timothy chapter 4, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, he says, Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season, Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We're told to preach the word. To be instant in season, out of season. Be ready always. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. The in verse sixteen here. Uh, I'm sorry, in 1 Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4. Verse 16. It says, Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. The great responsibilities of a pastor is to is to be uh, uh, apt to teach one of the qualifications. Uh, certainly, he's telling he's telling the instructing the pastors to 
uh, take heed to continue in the doctrine, the doctrine of God's Word. In doing this, not only save yourself, but also those that hear you. We're not talking about... Uh, we're not talking about some kind of uh, anything except for the fact that in, in, in continuing the doctrine, saving yourself as well as those that hear you from uh, heresy, from trouble, from trial, uh, all sorts of things can be avoided if we continue in the, the doctrine, continuing in the faith that was once delivered. You know, whenever we consider this, uh, and like I said, this is this is simply really an introduction, I guess, to the topic of the pastor. But uh, in Second Timothy chapter two, Second Timothy chapter two and verse fifteen, he says, he says, "Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed." Rightly dividing the word of truth. Study, study, study. The pastor of the Lord's church needs to have time to study. He needs to study. Uh, church ought to uh, expect this out of him, and he ought to expect it out of himself. If a pastor does not study in public, private, he'll be a little use in public. Scripture demands that the pastor study. I come from part of the world where people used to brag about the two things. So there was one group who liked to brag about their 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 degrees. They come up and they say, well I'm Dr. So and so. Uh, another group would come up and they said, "Well, I don't, I don't even have a doctor. I, I, I don't even have a doctorate. I don't, I didn't go to school, and uh, I didn't study." And they would brag about the fact that they didn't study. Both of these groups were wrong. Uh, just because you earn a degree doesn't mean you've arrived, quote unquote. And certainly, ignorance is not something to brag about. We're told to study. Uh, in fact, in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 13, The cloak I left at Troas with Carpus, when thou comest, bring with thee, and the books, but especially the parchment. You read about the life of Paul, the apostle, you talk about someone who, quote unquote, had arrived. He had set the feet of some of the best teachers that the Jews had to offer. He was a great missionary, possibly the greatest missionary that the world had ever, has ever seen. He had been caught up to the third heaven, seeing things that were unlawful for a man to utter. Yet, he wanted his books. He wanted his books and papers. Here was a man who, in his eight, older age, knew that... As long as he had time, he needed to study. He needed to study. If anyone in the New Testament could say he was above reading books, I suppose it was Paul, but he didn't. He didn't. And he was not ashamed to let others know that he read. Love that. He gave that advice to the younger preachers too. In 1 
Timothy chapter 4. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 13. He said, Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in thee, which was given thee by the by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. And he says, Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. You know, all God's people need to read, but especially the pastor. Possible, we ought to read different subjects, I believe. Uh, we ought to read his Bible. We ought to read other things too. Church truths, doctrines of grace, eschatology, read things that are that are written by sound men. Read things of history, astronomy, bi bi biology, geology, anthropology. Read things about logic and, uh, and, and and apologetics. Get into things about current events. You ought to be a well-educated individual to know something about each of these. Doesn't have to master them all. He may know something more about one of those subjects than another. And I believe God gives us all certain gifts and certain interests. So you might find one pastor that's very, very good with, with the subject of eschatology. And maybe another pastor that is very, very good with apologetics. And perhaps another one who is very, very good with history. That's okay. God gives to certain men certain, certain gifts. But I believe that we all ought to study and know something of each of these subjects. Like I said, this is just an introduction. I believe that we'll kind of stop there. And Lord willing, next time we'll kind of look at, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll look at the pastor a little deeper, maybe some qualifications. So I believe that's important too, because uh, in this day and age we see some things uh, that uh, that contrary to what God's word would would, would have. Whenever you get into God's Word, certainly some things that uh, you look at God's Word and you look at what's happening in the world, the religious world, and you think, mm, that don't just that just, that just don't that just don't fit. But these are important. This is an important topic to cover. Brother uh, Brother Ray, would you please pray for? Father, thank you for this day and this time that uh, we have to come together here in your house. Uh, look into your word, Father, and study. Father, help 